This video will be about how to integrate TriCaster and PTC cameras in a PTC Extreme. And uh, we'll just get started right away. We are in Reactor here. So this is the panel management software that comes along with your Blue Pill Inside products or your Blue Pill. Today, we will be running on a Blue Pill like this. So that gives us the flexibility to add in a PVC Extreme, which is a Unisketch model or a Blue Pill Inside model. If it's a Blue Pill Inside model, it means that all the power of the Blue Pill is built inside the controller and you don't need to have two separate devices, but you can go both ways. So we'll add a panel. We'll just uh, search up PVC and extremes are down here. So we'll just pick a PC Extreme V2. It won't have an IP. It will say missing IP because we'll just stay in a simulated environment. And for your information, if we go to the simulator, this is where you see the basically the two panels that we are working on. Yes, the blue pill is a panel like technically, and this is why it appears right here. But the PC Extreme is our main focus. So that's the simulated view of our controller that we'll be working on. But I can guarantee you that what you will see in real life is exactly this. And in fact, if I had that panel next to me, I would see the panel and the simulator work synchronously. So that's pretty nice. But for demonstration, screen recordings, it's so awesome to have it all on screen. So we'll just do that as we move forward here. Now, we want to add a few cameras as well. So I will. Um, well, you can either do it over here, then you add devices. And yeah, let's just add the TriCaster actually. So we'll just quickly search up TriCaster here and add something like TC2. We uh, type in the IP address of this guy. This keyboard is killing me. And I think this should be it. So I save this. We'll see that in a moment. It's connected. There we go. Actually, behind this, we have this vector, which is let me see. This is like TriCaster, but with the WizRT uh, branding here. So, but it's the same. And we can operate it from this team your session. So that's what we're doing. And by the way, everything I'm doing is um, over the internet to our office. So we are on a VPN. There's latency and all that good stuff that you know from remote productions. So we're also handling that as a part of this whole video. We could continue adding devices like cameras, but I'll press this add button right here. And then I can discover devices. So we have a ton of cameras on our network. So we'll just see what we have here today that we could connect to that is announcing itself. And um, I'll just pick this uh, RoboShot camera here, uh, select one of these. And um, let's see a few others. I hope to see some Panasonic cameras here or Canon cameras, but it doesn't seem like I have them. Uh, today. So what I will do is just to add some offline cameras by um, adding manually. Search up Canon CIN300. And actually today it's not super important that we have cameras we can actually control. So it's it's more like focus on the TriCaster integration. That's the, the thing. Now actually if you are adding multiple cameras, there's a little trick here. You can hold down shift and you can add multiple. So that's a pretty neat thing. There you go. You can see these cameras are added. I'm starting to actually regret a little bit. So I'll just right click remove from set because I have a little point in, in not having too many of these in fact. So let's, mm, oh, do I? Yeah, okay, we'll just stay with this. Let's um, see. Actually, I kind of got off on the wrong foot here. So if I go to the simulator and we look at the, the controller, uh, yeah, we see we have standard camera selection. We can select the cameras. This is the camera selector down here. And you see how uh, the, the presets and some stuff up here in the menu is changing around. And I tell you, if you if you haven't watched many videos on, on YouTube, you might want me to uh, from Skaho, you might want me to introduce this more, but we have a lot of content where we are showing how to add cameras to PPC Extremes and uh, all our PPC controllers in general, how this menu works. So up here we can cycle into the various settings that we can do on the cameras, which are you see many of these are currently blanked out and that just indicates, yeah, you could change white balance mode right here, but because we are not connected to the camera, it's like blocked out. You see that on the little uh, forbidden icon right there. So this is um, this is the simulator, and this is what we would normally cover in a video that only covers PC control. And notice how quickly we got to a point where we had mixed brands of cameras on that PTC controller. So that's really one of the things that we're doing. In fact, what we should do instead is to look at PTC control with video switching. That's the configuration we need. So we'll just grab what we just did and change over to this one. OK, so we have a little more extended selector right here. By selecting this configuration, we still need to add cameras. But now we'll just do it from our collection. So we'll be a little quicker here. Just uh, hold down Shift again and press the cameras that we have uh, previously selected. So we'll just add a few of those. 
there we go. And then um, just check back in the simulator. You see we have almost something that is like before. Uh, we see a slight change. We have this camera selector page, but you can see that I'm still able to change between these cameras. And I feel like just going back here real quick and then add a sixth camera. And I'll tell you why. Because if I add that sixth camera, like here, now we have six cameras. We go back to the simulator and you see down here we have a camera. Oh, sorry. Um, let me just scroll here. The camera selector page. If I press the bottom edge of that one, I'm cycling between the two pages of cameras we are currently now having. So that's um, that. That's the consequence of adding the sixth camera that we now need to use the page for something. Let's move back here because there are a few things in the home screen that we want to set up. The next one is teleforwarding. Teleforwarding means that we can hold on to a video switch like the TriCaster, take the tally information and move to the camera. Some cameras, they have a, a tally LED built in in front. So you can see red, green as the camera is, is on air or if it's on preview and so on. And that information, if we go to the TriCaster, is that little green indicator that you see here on the preview and the program row. So that's a pretty neat thing about Skyhoy products. The PVC controller is like a, a little gift to you that we can actually, with the connection to that switch, move that information forward to your cameras. That's otherwise not so easy. And that's what tally forwarding is about. So by choosing tally forwarding here, we need to create a new element. And that element has to bind itself to the TriCaster. We'll just pick this. And automatically, it fills in some information here. And we need to now concentrate on two things at the end of this entry in the table. We just need this one entry. And we need to either find out whether we want to take that tally information from one of the ME rows on the TriCaster or the global tally, which would be the main ME. Um, we can actually use ME tally for all of them. And here, we need to type in the ME or the bus. Number one is the main. Number two is ME1. Number three is ME2. I'm sorry about that. I would love this to be a drop down, but th th this is one of the moments, hopefully in the future, few moments, where I need to give you a little table of information that you need to cling on to. And um, how could we know this? Well, we could if we look into the TriCaster device code where we have a parameter list. And um, I think if we search up somewhere where we see these MEs, then you can see that I'm, I'm just finding an almost random parameter here, but where we have a dimension that is called layer. And layer is, in this case, the same as the MEs. And you see that there is an association between, let me see if I can zoom in on this, between one is, is main, two is ME1, two is uh, three is ME2, and so on. Admittedly, you would have to know this. But at least the information is right here. And that's the system underlying. And the day you have a drop down right here, that drop down will just give you the labels and it will be all nice. So that's what we see right here. We'll just use the main for tally forwarding. All right. Then we move on to routing trigger. And in routing trigger, it's sort of the opposite. When I press that button, I don't just want to select my camera for operation with the joystick. I also want to bring that source up on a monitor in front of me. And let's say that we have uh, we use one of the MEs on the TriCaster to be an auxiliary bus that could do this. So that's kind of the case. That, uh, But it could also be a video hub. Now, since we have that TriCaster, we'll just use that once again. And then we could pick which, um, which auxiliary is it. Actually, I thought that we might have like MEs that we could use here. Oh, well, we can, yeah, because we have program and preview on the MEs. But on other switches, like you could see we had it for like vMix. There you can, you can use the active or the preview or one of the outputs as your preview monitor. On an ATEM, you would have program preview and all the auxiliary buses, etc. So there is a, a lot of options here. Today, we are not just setting up routing triggers to bring up a preview monitor. We are using that to switch video. And since traditionally we use the preview row and then we have a cut button, that's what we'll pick here. So I'm basically saying whenever I press those buttons to select cameras, I am also selecting that source on preview on the TriCast. So I'll just type in one here. That's my main bus. And then we are good with the routing triggers. Before we can move on and test this, there is one thing that we need to do. I often forget myself. It's like selecting tally forwarding and routing triggers is so exciting that I can use those buses. But what I have not done yet is to inform the system 
what is the, what is camera one on my PC controller? Is that really input one on my system? Or would it be input three? So that mapping between inputs and cameras here needs to be done. And that's what we do back in the camera selector. We have not seen this. This view got filled in automatically as we pick the cameras easily from the device uh, selector. And usually you don't have to go in here because it will pick the right configuration, the most relevant configuration. It will also set up a name that is useful to you. And over here at the end, it would have these fields. And if you don't put anything into them, it's usually fine. Today, it's not fine because today we need to say that camera number one has a certain tally index. So let's just do that and say that the um, we could imagine camera number one is actually input number two. This is input number four. This is input number three. And then we would say input number one, input number five and six. OK. And now, since we are using the TriCaster for both the getting tally information and routing to the preview bus, we need to make sure the routing index is exactly the same as the tally index. But imagine if the routing was done by a video hub instead, a video switch, a Kumo router or something, then you would need to use other indexes here depending on what we chose down in the routing trigger. So we'll just type in one, two, sorry, um, four, three, one, five, and Six. By the way, if you have sequential numbers, you'll be happy to know that this plus one button will just allow you to type in one in the top field, press it five times, you have all the numbers in sequence. So that's pretty neat. This is what we need. We'll now go to the simulator and check if it works. So over here in the simulator, it seems like we have some tally information and it seems like we are switching some video. But to confirm this, let's just make this window slightly smaller and then have the TriCaster next to us so we can see them together, all right? So let's just see here. Um, I will navigate so that we see this better like that and get back to the team viewers Ooh, session like this. All right, sweet. Now um, let's press this one. Um, we, if I could have this window go away. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's like I need to, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I'm on number two. That was my source number two. Then comes number four, right? Then comes number three then one and five. And we have both tally and we have the routing to the preview bus in place. So there we got it all. What if I do it the opposite way, uh, opposite way around? Yes, you see that it's also reflecting if I'm changing on the TriCaster. So far, so good. We have managed to set up this um, routing correctly. And so far, in a sense, we have not I mean, we are doing video switching, but what is video switching unless you have the cut and the auto button? So that's what we are going back and finishing up in the configuration now. So we'll just go in here, close this one down. And then we are looking at, and this is actually the extra thing you get when it says with video switching. It's not that you couldn't do video switching with the standard generic PC control because choosing a routing trigger that uses the preview bus or the program bus would actually do video switching for you. But in this case, picking video switching here and associating it, <coughs> associating it with the TriCaster, and it will pick this default configuration up, which is currently the only one that makes sense to us. That will give us, and now hold on, in this section over here, we have now six buttons that will be available to us with um, switching operations, obviously cut. So let's try this out. That action alone allowed us to have a cut button, and we'll now try that one out. And there you go. You can see we have cut. If I press auto, it will just wait a second and then it will cut. So actually what is happening behind the scenes is that we are making a transition, which we could see if we were able to, let, let's just say, okay, we have cut, 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 and now transition. Yes, please. All right, that's pretty neat. So we have now a video switching solution on a PDC controller, right? That's pretty cool. Now let's go back to the home menu because there are a few other things I want to show you. And we also have other videos that is covering this for vMix. So there is more details on how you could use quick classes, for instance. But a quick class would basically be to add um, something in the, I'll just show you in the controller. This section up here, in this configuration, this section has been reserved for quick classes. That is small snippets that you can easily cycle around in that will give you access to video routers, other video switches, all kinds of utility things, audio channels, and so on. So look at that in a different video. 
down here we have some spaces that we could use for user buttons. But in this case, we could easily, and because we know that we have a camera selector here that actually gives us camera number six, but why are we not using these buttons for the camera selector? That's my question. And by the way, do we need to have PTC cameras for all of it? And those things is now gonna be addressed. So what we basically do if we wanna add additional sources for switching would be to go into the camera selector here, and then you would just have to add additional rows and you don't need to give them numbers, but you need to give them a name like DDR and uh, other source. Um, we don't need any configurations for camera iris control because it is not a camera. Tally forwarding makes no sense. That's related to the PTC. But what we need is we need the tally index to be in place. And I think DDR is 1001. And then this one could be whatever, seven. Let's uh, assume that. 1001, seven. And uh, with those two in place, we now have a larger camera selector with some sort of fake cameras and they are hidden in here. So we have them right here, okay? So I press DDI, I press other source and it's apparently also working. So let's just confirm that. But um, of course they actually, if, if you look at the controller as a whole, if I'm, if I'm selecting a PTC camera, I'm getting menu and all that stuff for the PTC camera. But when I'm selecting a source that is not a PTC camera, but only switching the video switcher, this all blanks out and you see nothing. That's kind of natural, right? And it's also a nice signal that you, you press the source and then you get the options up here, the joystick will work and all that. So now I've organized my windows a little bit better here. So let's just pick, you know, source number seven. It's right there, DDR, right there. So two sources which do not have a PTC camera associated with them is so easily added. Now, the thing that we want to do is to go back here to the home menu, the home screen, and on the home screen, we'll go down to page sizes. That's the last thing I want to tell you about because on the page size, you can basically decide yourself how many buttons in that row to the left do you want to use for cameras. And we used five. And let me see, we have 12 buttons altogether. There's one for the page. We want to keep that. So that's 11 left. Then we have auto and cut. Then we are at nine. So if we make this page size nine, it means that we are now occupying the remaining nine buttons from that point on for the camera select. So that seems like a good choice. And if we go to the oh, no, packages, packages where you update software from us. Now, if we go back here, you see that we now have a page selector that would give us in this case one to eight because we have now eight, one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight six, oh, seven, eight. And then the ninth is still available. If we go to 10 sources, we would just have the, the camera selector over here reactivate it to actually do something. Right now it doesn't really do anything, but we can do all the things that we want on this lower row. We can cut and we can auto our sources like that. So that's video switching for you on a TriCaster with a lot of PC cameras with a PTC Extreme.